Hey, you know, there's thousands of guys around the country that's got garages just full of interesting projects. Could be Indy cars, could be Ferraris, you name it. And all of these cars have historical significance. They can be hot rods, custom cars, all kinds of neat stuff, and they're just waiting for Dave and I to find them. You bet. And today we're here in the great Pacific Northwest where we're going to take a look at a few of them right here on Griot's Garage Treasures. Welcome to Griot's Garage Treasures. You know, Sam and I have made the trip up here to the great Northwest to Tom and Susan Armstrong's house. And they are a unique couple that have an incredible collection of cars. Absolutely. They're real car people. They're racers. They're collectors. And I'll tell you what, they've allowed us to take this stuff out of the garage so we can get a good close look at it. And what's unique about it is they not only collect them, but they drive these cars as well. And I love this Jag. And I'm an old Jag guy. I used to have a couple at one time in my life, but I never had one of these. And certainly nothing looked like this. Oh, this thing looks better than the day it was built. It sure does. Well, there's a lot of other cars here that I want to check out, Sam. So I'm going to check some of these out right now. Well, I'm really partial to these Jaguars. You know, I worked on them. This is a beautiful car. What an example of an XK140. It's a 1955. Well, that's a 140 MC. And I saw that car advertised back east, and I flew back and looked at it. And I really wanted to drive it home by myself, but uh, that wasn't working out. So I had it shipped home and spent about a year working on it and getting it really pretty nice car. Of course, it's a beautiful black steel car with those beautiful louvers in the hood. And, you know, this car had a 3.8 liter twin cam six in it, four-speed gearbox, you know, wire wheels with real knockoffs. And look in here, you know, by the way, you would loosen this up, the steering wheel would actually telescope, so you could adjust it to the driver's arms. You got the tack, the business end of it, right there in front of you. The speedometer's over there. And of course, there's a beautiful Smith's instruments. These cars were fast, they were beautiful on the road. And of course, this is, like I said, restored to the nines. The interesting thing is, there's a real story behind this car. It found its way into this garage, and then it went away, and like a homing pigeon, it came back to this garage. A friend of mine just kept bugging me he had to have it, and so I sold it to him. Susan wasn't real happy about that, losing that car because we did the tours, the Colorado Grand and the California Mealy and things like that in it. Lo and behold, the guy called me up and says, uh, I found another car I want more than the Jag. Would you buy it back? And I said, sure. So we bought it back, and, and so we've owned that car twice. All right, well, I'm going to date myself on this because if you've ever seen the old TV series Route 66, this car will remind you of that because it looks just like the one they used to run in it. This is a 62 Corvette. Now, this was a year kind of uh, before the transition, before they made the Stingray. This is a rare one, though, because this has got a 327 in it, but it's also got the Rochester fuel injection system on it, so that's kind of rare. But it's well restored. It's got pretty much uh, original looking equipment in it. This guy has well over 100,000 miles on it. Tom Armstrong's boy drove this to college and he drove it back and forth across the country several times, so this car has seen the road. You can see on the wheels, it's got the spinner hubcaps. I guess Ralph Nader didn't like those. But you can see this is a beautiful car, a lot of history to it, something that a lot of collectors would like to have. Let's see what Sam's up to now. What'd you find, Sam? You can look far and wide at car shows. You're not gonna see one of these. Very few of them exist. 1937 Cord, it's a four-door sedan, it's called a Berlin, front opening doors. And Tom Armstrong, this is a beautiful specimen. Tell me about this car mechanically. Well, it, it's quite unusual. The uh, car is, of course, supercharged, front-wheel drive, the transaxle's up here. It's pre-select shifting, mm -hmm. so inside the car, if you're running in fourth gear and you see a corner arriving that you want second gear for, pre-select it. When you get there, you engage the clutch, shifts automatically, and away you go. It's very, very unique. And you see these supercharger pipes coming out the side. They come off these porcelain-coated manifolds. And I see now you've got the radiator, the water coming through here, but this is where the supercharger lives, isn't it? And uh, that's uh, part of the combustion efficiency of putting the hot water in there with it. Okay. Now, this is a flathead V8 with aluminum head, but it's in backwards because it's driving the transaxle. Right. How big is this engine? How much horsepower is it with the supercharger? It's about uh, 275 horsepower. A lot of horsepower for its day. For its day, yeah. Yeah. 
This is an awesome car. How fast have you driven this? Uh, not over 80. Not over 80, yeah. Uh, these cars were, were performance cars in their day. They held the American stock car record for 12 years. No kidding? Yep. Wow, yep. that's a neat fact. Yep. Well, this is a beautiful specimen. Uh, and how many of these exist? Well, I only know of nine. Nine. And that's the only one I've ever seen. And when I saw it, I told my friend, I says, I want to be the next owner of this car. And he says, well, that's okay. And a few years went by and I sold another car and he called me up and says, now you have enough money to buy my car. Because he'd been to the auction and seen the price I got for the other one. Well, this thing is beautiful. And we got a lot more to come. We got to take a break, but don't go away because you're going to see some awesome stuff. With more than 22 years of experience, Griot's Garage is car care for the perfectionist. Whether you're cleaning a daily driver or perfecting the paint on your dream car, Griot's Garage makes a full line of products to suit all your car care needs. From paint and upholstery to wheels and tires, leather and carpet, glass and chrome, car care liquids made in the USA and backed by our promise. We make it, we teach it, we guarantee it. Have fun in your garage at griotsgarage.com. This edition of Griot's Garage Treasures is being brought to you by Griot's Car Care for the Perfectionist and by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology and by Original Parts Group, world's largest source of GM A-body parts and accessories. Welcome back. Well, we've got a great specimen right here. It's a 1948 Chrysler Town and Country Woody car. I was driving downtown Seattle in, in an area where there's some car businesses and I look in the window and here's this car sitting in the window. You know, these cars were very popular with the country club set. Most of them were convertible. This is rare. This is a four door. So I got my nose up to the window, you know, trying to get everything about that and I call Susan and tell her about it and we go down and look at it again through the window. This is a big car powered by a flathead six. It has an unbelievable drive line. It has what they call fluid drive. That means it has a clutch and a torque converter. And you're familiar with the old H pattern, three on the tree. Well, where second gear would be, that's first in one of these cars. Let your clutch up, you go along, put it into what third would be that second gear. You get to a certain RPM, take your foot off the gas, and third gear comes on automatically. There was something mysterious about the price or something, but as I was negotiating the next day to buy it, I couldn't really make a deal. And this car is just beautiful. I mean, this is all the original wood here, it's been refinished, it's been restored. The roof rack, of course, that wood's been replaced because it was so badly weathered. It has a steel, original Fulton sun visor on it. Fulton made fun sun visors for everybody. Finally, I slammed my hand down on the owner's desk and I says, I bought companies easier than I'm buying this car. You know, what's wrong here? Remember the back in the days where radio had a dial instead of being horizontal, the push buttons in the dial were vertical. And I never did understand, but anyway, I paid his price and got the car. And, uh, but it was difficult. It was the most difficult car purchase I've ever done. This has all been reupholstered. It's a beautiful leather in it. Even the door panels, look at that. Beautiful wood. There's an interesting feature. On the window cranks, it would hinge so you could roll your window up and down, but when you're sitting down, it doesn't wouldn't pressure on your leg. And again, this car has got a lot of original stuff on it too. Look at these massive trunk hinges. Those things look like marine hardware. This trunk is all wood, it's very heavy. We've enjoyed it. We drive it to the University of Washington Husky football game tailgates and have had a lot of fun with it. If you don't have a hotel room that night, you can open the trunk and sleep in the trunk. I mean, it's the biggest thing you've ever seen in, in your life. This is all the original fabric covering inside here. This is like a leather, all of that. That's had a new carpet put in it. But this car is also a hot rod. It's had some interesting things done under the hood. Again, these were a flat six or an L-head six. This thing's got a high compression head and twin carburetors. It's quite a hot rod. And again, you were a hot dog in the day if you had one of these cars. You know, when you say Ferrari, this is one of the ones that comes to my mind. This is the Testarossa. What a beautiful car this is. And Tom drives this all the time. They travel in it. It's got a flat 12 in it. It's got a few miles on it, but boy, this is one that you want to be on the road with. The interesting thing about this car is how Tom 
came to get it. Well, I had just sold my company about 15 minutes earlier, and I went down the stairs and down to the dealer and, and ordered the car. That was 1988, and we've loved that car. We, we take it like we have a big transporter, and sometimes we'll take a couple of race cars and the Ferrari and go somewhere and race and get the Ferrari out and go somewhere else. And we've been to the East Coast and the whole thing. You've heard the term Continental Kit. This is the car that started it. The first classic that we ever bought was a 48 Lincoln Continental. And that was sold through the years and Tom's had several others. See the real long hood? It's got a flathead V12 in it. So it's a 12 cylinder car. And look in its day, push buttons to operate the doors. The one that's in the garage now is a convertible. It's something we've enjoyed. We drive all of our cars, whether they're race cars or whether they're collector cars or whatever they are. It's a beautiful car, a big heavy car, but of course it didn't have a lot of power options, so you got a big steering wheel, helps you steer it and stop it. It's a good car to go down to the local root beer stand, which we have a triple X root beer stand right here in Esquab. And, you know, if you remember the Godfather, the car that was the Sonny was shot in at the toll booth, exact same kind of car. They started building these just prior to World War II, and of course 1948 was the last year. We've taken tours in it, classic car club things, uh, and it's something that we've always enjoyed. It's fun to take the grandchildren with it. With more than 22 years of experience, Griot's Garage is car care for the perfectionist. Whether you're cleaning a daily driver or perfecting the paint on your dream car, Griot's Garage makes a full line of products to suit all your car care needs. From paint and upholstery to wheels and tires, leather and carpet, glass and chrome, car care liquids made in the USA and backed by our promise. We make it, we teach it, we guarantee it. Have fun in your garage at griotsgarage.com. them like that anymore do they Tom? beautiful yep. hey welcome back to griot's garage treasures and we're here in tom armstrong's garage having fun and tom this is one incredible car this is your real prize winner here isn't it it is this car susan and i have owned for 52 years i think it is and this is a cord yep. 1936 Phaeton. And they call this the coffin nose cord because you can see it kind of does look like a coffin, but this isn't supercharged like your other one. No, it isn't. Uh, they only supercharged in 37. This is a 36. And so this has a V8, flathead V8 in it? Correct. Okay, but something else I noticed about this, Tom, and this is really ahead of its time because Corvette picked this up years ago, or General Motors did, but look at that, they got covered headlights. Right. So these will open up, I guess they're vacuum operated? Or well, mechanical. unfortunately you have to crank them up, but, but they work fine. Okay, and you can see they got more than a five mile an hour bumper on here. This was when a bumper was a real bumper in it. But what I noticed back here is the top. You know, this is a convertible. You've had this in different shows where? Yeah, this has been to the national meet of Auburn Court Duesenberg and won the most popular Accord and the Gordon Buerig Trophy for the best Accord in the country. And uh, then it's been to the Grand Classic in California and it won uh, best in show at the Forest Grove Concours. And you restored it yourself, what did you say, it's like 14 years? 14 years, this was a big project and you know, every, everything was a, was a challenge, both my skill and uh, money. Like I remember the bumper, you just mentioned that. It didn't come with a bumper. There's a reason cords don't have bumpers, is to get to the transmission when it didn't shift, you had to take the, the bumper off and so forth and get in there and make it work manually. Susan was out in my 57 Chevy buying this bumper for my Christmas and uh, she came home with a damaged car and, and she told me she hit a dog and I was worried about what she was doing way off in the country, you know, in my Chevy and I couldn't get a straight answer. So I finally just decided to shut up. Of course, she was buying me a bumper and she paid $40 for it. You know, you were probably a wise man. That was, that was, up, that right? was a huge <laughs> number. Well, I'll tell you, I noticed back here though, with this is a convertible top, I noticed that this is ahead of its time back here as well. It's totally enclosed. Tell me about that. Very unique. This unsnaps, this whole section raises up. The convertible top goes right down into there. The quarter windows, these snap off. The quarter windows fold into here, so 
to get this beautiful, clean design, which was what Gordon Burig, the designer, was all about. You notice no door hinges, uh, no hinges back here. Right. Flush mounted tail lights, center mounted license plate, gas filler concealed behind there. Unbelievable stuff for 1936. Here's a gorgeous two wheeler. In fact, it's the only two wheeler in the collection. It's a Holly Davidson, it's a bagger, it's a Heritage Softail, 88 cubic inch twin. It's got 723 miles, actual miles on it since new. It's seven years old. And of course, there's two sides to this story, his and hers. <laughs> Our family tradition has not been motorcycles. She didn't want me to have a motorcycle, obviously. Tom never's had a motorcycle. He didn't ride a motorcycle as a young man. I did buy him some years ago for a present, um, a old Indian motorcycle, which was kind of dangerous. And I was not skilled on a motorcycle at all. I had to go to motorcycle school and get my license and all that business. One day the doorbell rang and this man was here with this big soft tail Harley motorcycle and he said, I'm delivering this for Tom and I said, well Tom hasn't ordered a motorcycle and he said, oh yes he did and I said, oh no it couldn't possibly be. The man that ran the store called me and said, your wife won't let me unload the motorcycle here and I said, well just go around the corner, unload it and take off and just leave it there. Usually he tells me what he buys. I'll tell you what, we're up here in Tom's room. This is above the garage where all those fabulous cars are. We have a whole city here, a railroad. Look at this, this is awesome. How many trains do you have? 16. 16. Transformers with double handles. You got smoke, you got whistles. This is... What in the world are you doing? I can't leave you alone for an instant. No, but you can leave me alone for several hours here. Tom and I are doing trains. Boy, it just goes to show you what these guys have in their garage. They've got everything. But well, we're gonna go to the race shop right after this break, so stay with us. I promise you we're really gonna go there. I'm having fun in the garage. This edition of Griot's Garage Treasures is being brought to you by Griot's, car care for the perfectionist, and by Original Parts Group, world's largest source of GM A-body parts and accessories, and by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Hey, welcome back to Griot's Garage Treasures. Well, I told you we would be back here at the race shop, but they even have some hot rods here. They got a little high boy roadster here. But this is what I like better, and this is right here. This takes me back to another time in my life when I used to actually work on these cars back in the Can-Am series. This is a 1969 Lola Can-Am car. Now, for you guys out there who are really into this stuff, this may not look like a 69 Lola because it's had a lot of different body work on it, a lot of changes on it, but it is. It's got a 430 cubic inch aluminum engine in it. These things were really the ultimate race car at the time, and they still are, believe it or not. They are really fast. Had a lot of fun with these cars. They're exotic, they're loud, and if you have a chance to see them, by all means go see these things when they're running in the historic races. But Sam's got a car behind me that is really impressive, and it will surprise you. This is a 63 split window Corvette, but this is a Z06. They made less than 100 of these things. These cars are awesome, got all kinds of special stuff. Special engine, big brakes. They got a 36 gallon fuel tank in the original ones. If you look at this little driving suit here, that's a tiny suit. It's a tiny woman with a big handle on. A car like this can really make it go around a track. It is specially set up for me. I'm, I'm just over five feet tall. And so it has a very special seat in it, which is fixed to hold me in, uh, it's crushed, it's pushed forward so that I can reach third gear while I'm buckled in, and it has big blocks on the pedals so I can work the pedals in it. So no one, I don't have to worry about anybody driving my Corvette because they won't fit in it. Uh, I had all my friends out and all of her friends out just to see her first driving event, and we just had leased some time at uh, Pacific Raceways. So she's out doing the laps and laps and laps and laps and 
Finally, I get the flag and I go out and I flag her in. And she says, what's wrong? Why'd you flag me in? I says, oh, we're hungry. How about fixing this lunch? So that didn't go over well either. So you can see how small this seat is, got a false floor, and how the pedals and everything are raised. So the car will fit the driver real well. You gotta be held in there in order to be successful running around a road course particularly. So this is awesome. Now it's time to have fun in your garage with Speed Shine. And this week we're gonna talk about all the benefits of this amazing product. Speed Shine provides a fast and easy way to clean any painted surface. Simply spray and wipe for a perfect shine. Clean from the top down, working in small sections. Mist Speed Shine across the surface, then quarter fold a soft Speed Shine microfiber cloth. Using light pressure, wipe the surface safely to remove dust, bird droppings, road dirt, grime, and other surface contaminants. As your cloth gets dirty, flip it over and use a clean side. Finish with a light buff using a clean microfiber cloth to remove any remaining residue. Speed Shine is perfect for those between wash cleanups, giving your paint that just waxed shine. Great for that final touch before a show or after a weekend cruise. Use Speed Shine on doors, chrome, cabinets, rims, trim, wheels, Speed Shine is just what you need to have fun in your garage. Hey, now here's what I call real race cars. Tom and Susan have a great collection, but they've got some Indy cars as well. In fact, they used to go Indy car racing. This is a car, the Webster car, was designed by Jerry Isert, and they ran this back in 1972. Neat car, had a Gurney Westlake engine in it. Didn't do too bad, but you can see what they looked like back then. This wasn't too far after I left Indy car racing. But right here, this is a Lola. Dominic Dobson drove that years ago. And they've got that. They actually drive both cars. They can have a lot of fun with both of them at the same time. And you can get serious with these too. So you gotta be careful with them, right Sam? I'll tell you, vintage racing's a big sport. They got the right cars. If you fit in that, I know I could fit in this. Hey, I don't fit in either one of them. I never <laughs> did. The <laughs> only thing I could do is work on them. Anyway, we wanna thank Tom and Susan for allowing us to visit their garage and look at their collection. It's been a lot of fun. Remember, have fun in your garage. We'll see you again next time here at Griot's Garage Treasures. So long. Now you could fit in that, Sammy. Yeah, I could. I could. I know I could. I don't know what I'd do. It'd be like a dog chasing a car and catching it. Yeah. We have another Jaguar. We had a D-type Jaguar. And uh, Tom really didn't race it, but we did use it on rallies and car trips to sit in that car driving 150 miles an hour in Colorado with the world in front of you is an experience that I cannot describe. <laughs>